Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today I wanted to share how I've developed my art style over the last three years of focused illustration practice. I wanted to give a disclaimer before we get into the rest of the video that art is hard and there's no quick fix to finding your style because your style grows from the decisions you make as you take a piece from idea to artistic completion over and over again. I do think there is a basic framework of steps you can take that can help you develop your style, but again, I'm just speaking from my own experience and as you can see, if you're interested in how I made this progression across the last three years, then keep watching. I also want to say that I don't think my style is going to stay like this grid for the rest of my life. This is just like where I'm at right now. And I personally think that as long as you're gaining new experiences, your style is going to consistently change as you grow as a person throughout your life. So hopefully, like if my style stayed like this for the rest of my life, I would not be happy, but I am happy in the present. But I know it's gonna change whether I like it or not as I keep drawing. So that's the fun thing about art. You just never become the best artist in the world. So I broke the steps kind of into phases. So phase one is like, you're just, you're just a regular human being that's starting to want to draw or paint or do something creative but it's more of like a fleeting thought than an action that you take every day. So the first step is just anytime you have any urge to create and you are happy and in that mindset, like just, just draw something, just make something, even if it's only for a few minutes a day, I think that's really what I was doing in the first grid is I wanted to draw, but I didn't know what to draw. And it was like a really big struggle to get started, but I would just put on a movie or something else. So it's like, I wasn't fully focused on that and then just doodle. And from there, I started wanting to improve as I was completing pieces. But I think a really important part of this phase is don't get too caught up in how good things are or, oh, this didn't turn out exactly like I wanted it to. Like really focus on the fact that this was fun and enjoyable and now you have a little piece of art that you made. I think this is also the time to focus on getting some basic technical skills rather than worrying about your style because if you just focus on style, it's gonna be hard for you to make decisions because when you're looking at professional artists, they've already gone through all of that basic knowledge. It's gonna be really hard for you to pick out what you like so much about their style because you're not gonna understand the technical decisions that they made, which is part of what forms their style. They may not be following traditional art principles, but you have to know what the rules are to understand how they're breaking them to, to get their final piece. Do you like the design of that storefront, their logo, whatever? Like, why do you like it? And that can go to movies, video games, character design, fine art, historical fine art, like it doesn't need to be present day. And that's gonna help you start thinking about how can I navigate to a style I like for myself? But, but in no way am I saying copy people, but that is part of the process is looking at people trying to incorporate pieces of things that they do into your own art, but putting your own spin on it. And I think a lot of art style videos kind of just like stop at that step. So again, to summarize, step one, draw, create anytime you have a tiny urge to and just focus on how fun it is or whatever kind of enjoyment you get out of it. Don't worry about how good it is. And then maybe just start thinking about like color, what kind of shapes do I like? Do I like sharp shapes? Do I like organic shapes? What kind of things do I like to draw? Do I want to draw in pencil, digital, painting, ceramics, like that kind of thing? And don't worry too much about your style yet because you're just like a little birdie hatching out of its egg. So you gotta do that first. <laughs> okay, so phase two, which is again, kind of correlating to my second little grid of images is you've been drawing consistently-ish now. You're feeling confident. You have kind of a voice in what you're trying to draw. You're seeing something, but you're not really sure how to take it to the next level or you might be getting frustrated. Why isn't this good yet? That kind of thing. If I had to name phase two, I would say 
you're a chick, but you can't fly yet. The first step is gonna be create something consistently. You need to make sure that you're finishing your pieces. If you're stopping because something gets difficult or scary and you're not sure what to do, you're not giving your brain the chance to make a decision. Those decisions are what's gonna make your style. That's the biggest piece that I'm, I'm gonna give to you is finish your art pieces. Even if it's something that you're not in love with or it's something that took an hour, just finish it. And I think some people can be like, oh, well, how do I know when a piece is done? I think you can kind of feel it, but this is some advice I got from a mentor. As you're adding to it, if the value you're getting every time you add something else to the piece, it's getting lower and lower when you need to decide like, okay, this isn't worth me adding anything to it because it's not changing the overall creation or picture that much. This is art, it's supposed to be fun. If it is hurting you inside to keep going, then try to wrap it up and move on. In this phase, I also think you should start coming up with specific projects that cater to your interests. You don't need to be doing art exercises forever. I know in the first phase I said start looking into things, but if those kill your creative soul, you don't have to do them. We're not in art school. You can improve by doing things that you're interested in. So in this phase of my personal art journey, I basically wanted to focus on children's book illustration. So I started thinking of personal projects that tied my interests to that specific job market. And again, if you're just doing art as a hobby, just make projects for what you're interested in. But so for me, this looked like chapter book covers, holiday cards, and mainly children's book illustrations. And then finally start finding your own artistic community and people that you admire. This can be in-person or online learning resources, or it can just be a, like a Discord or a Patreon of your favorite artist. This is gonna allow you to receive information that you aren't actively searching for and might never have found in the form of inspiration or allows you, because you can get really laser focused on one person or one thing and that can kind of stilt your progression. This is also gonna give you a way to get feedback and connect with other people at a similar point in their journeys, which can be really motivating. Personally, social media challenges were a really good way for me to find new people to interact with and continue finding motivation to finish pieces. So some art challenges I did on Instagram were Peachtober. I've done that, I think two or three years in a row, Inktober. Um, there's a lot of holiday challenges and you certainly don't need to fully 100% do every prompt in these challenges because they are very, very hard and can cause burnout. So just do what you think is fun. Again, we're not in art school. You can make your own decisions. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> Okay, so to summarize, phase two, draw some more. Make sure you're finishing your pieces to whatever form of completion you feel is like, this is done. And you don't need to show it to people, just like what is done for you. You don't need to post it on Instagram. And then start finding online or in-person art communities that can help motivate you and introduce new inspiration that you might not find yourself. And then we're gonna move on to phase three. So phase three, gonna start with draw some more. Shocker, you might find that if you're creating consistently, you have an online community, you have free online resources that you've been looking at, you feel kind of confident in where you wanna go with your art, you might need to start paying for some professional guidance or looking for peers that are a few steps ahead of you that you can ask questions or at least like absorb content from them. So I did this multiple times. At first I wanted to start with like the cheapest option. So I found artists in the same field I wanted to go in. So children's book illustration. And I found people that were offering one-time portfolio reviews for like 50 to $100. And I did that a few times. So the middle square is when I started doing this. And that was helpful, but art is really subjective. So some people would say one thing and then the next person would conflict with the previous person's advice. So that was annoying. So I stopped doing that, but it was helpful just to get a general perspective. I then joined an online picture book class, which was more expensive. I think it was like a six month self-guided course. I'll post a link to it below. And I found that helpful just because they had a lot of, again, inspiration I would not have found myself because they are located in the UK and a lot of the artists that they interviewed for this like, had resources from I had never heard of. The group of students that were in the class with me were also more international and 
the questions they asked were different because they were in different phases of their lives. So, and yeah, so it was definitely helpful, but I think I really felt like I needed one-on-one -on -one consistent feedback over a long period of time so they got to know me and understand my interests and where I want to go instead of like a one-time feedback uh, where they don't have any context on myself or my journey leading up to that point. So that is why I found a mentor that I did a six month one-on-one -on -one mentorship with where we met every two-ish weeks for an hour and they gave me assignments and then would give me feedback the following meeting on the assignment they gave me and like an hour is a good chunk of time to talk with someone and ask questions. So I will be making a video with that probably just going into that mentorship specifically, but please like and comment down below if you want to see that and maybe I'll come out with the video sooner <laughs> if people are actually interested. The mentorship was definitely the most expensive out of all of the resources, but I do think I got the most out of it. And I think it's important to note that I waited the longest to do that because I wanted to have a more consistent style and a better focus so I could ask really specific questions, get really specific feedback. I don't know if I would recommend doing a mentorship one-on-one -on -one when you're just starting because there's so many variables that you haven't figured out for yourself yet or tried. So that's just like a disclaimer, don't just, I mean, I'm sure it would be helpful for anyone, but I just personally would not recommend that if you're in the hatching birdie phase. That's kind of all of my general advice on what I did. Basically, this cycle is just going to continue forever until you die, and that's just art. <laughs> In all seriousness, I don't think artists ever arrive at your final style. It will always be evolving, and that's the exciting part of it. You never know where you're going to end up, and it's pretty much all about the journey, which is kind of annoying to say. It's going to be a journey with ups and downs, plateaus. You might not feel like you're improving at all, but I think it's really important to collect all of your work every year and look at it as a whole because you will see your style evolving if you've been trying to push yourself consistently. I know one of the biggest things people are concerned about is how much time they can devote to this passion, you know? I work a full-time job and there are several weeks or months where I do not pick up a pencil, but what has allowed me to progress my style over the last three years is consistently finishing my pieces. I know finding the time can be really difficult, but there's no rule saying you need to draw every day. I mostly draw on like Saturdays and maybe a little bit of Sunday and maybe one other day during the week while I watch TV and that has worked really well for me. Obviously, if you're wanting to get somewhere really fast, you're gonna have to prioritize it more and dedicate more time to it. But I'm, I know that as I made it a habit to draw and saw myself improving consistently or at least finishing pieces consistently, then I was more motivated to draw. So it's like a, a loop of like, oh, I drew more, I finished this piece. Oh, maybe I finished this piece quicker or maybe, ooh, I did something new in this piece that's really exciting. I wanna try something else with that same technique. So that is about it for this video. I really hope it was helpful for someone. And again, this is just what I did to get to where I am right now. I am by no means saying I am the most amazing artist, but I am proud of where I've gotten so far. So hopefully this helps someone. And again, art is supposed to be fulfilling and fun and if you find that these steps do not work for you, you don't have to do them. Do what works for you and just remember that consistency beats talent any day. So thank you for watching to the end. If you wanna at least keep up with updates from me, I post a lot more on my Instagram at Savvy Lazo Illustration. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Oh. I did not say what phase three is. I'm gonna say phase three is leapt off the cliff and you're flying. Yep. So majestic, you're a majestic bird. Okay, bye. <laughs>